initiative or or Akai um, that's led by Peter Peter Pipers, who is here to talk uh, to talk today as well. But it is very much a team effort, um, and we're fortunate today to have some of the key partners here um, to speak from their perspective about how this has grown and how it's uh, being sustained through the the Akilimo associations. In fact, it's now reaching something like. Um, uh, almost, uh, I think, over 800,000 farmers. Um, and uh, um, it, the, the advisories are, are being used across about almost 400,000 hectares, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong. Um, so with that, let me just leave it to the Akilimo team to tell you much more about it. Um, I will first ask, uh, call on them to introduce themselves, um, and then we'll move on uh, from there. So, uh, Thompson, may I ask you to come in and introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you, Meda. My, my name is Thompson Ogunsami. I'm uh, working with uh, the CG Center, basically uh, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. I'm based in Dar es Salaam. And what I do mainly is looking into the aspect of scaling and partnerships, uh, right from when we started from the archive project. And now this has also been part of what has been included into Excellence in Agronomy Initiative. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks, Thompson. I did forget to mention that, in fact, the work done here has formed uh, uh, essentially the foundation for a lot of what we're doing in Excellence in Agronomy. So it's it's a, a very critical uh, piece of work. Um, Tom, uh, uh, Samson, can I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Okay, thank you very much. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Samson Ubuntoy. I am the regional manager um, extension services for Notori Chemical Industries PLC. Um, I am based in Nigeria, Delta State to be precise. I cover the southern part of the country. Notori is an agrolite chemicals and power company. We produce fertilizers and uh, we were one of the primary partners that worked with the Akai project, uh, specifically on the fertilizer recommendation use case. Um, I led the activities of the team on the project and I I also emerged as uh, the convener and then presently the general secretary of the Akimo Nigeria Association. Thank you once again. Perfect. Thank you so much, Samson, for joining us. We we are very eager to hear um, what you have to say about all of this. Uh, Patrick, may I ask you to, to, to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Kiao. I, I work as the managing director for Isoko Tanzania but also I manage the East African market. Uh, so yeah, I've been privileged to work with the uh, Akai team uh, through the Akilimo journey, and it's been uh, interesting. So we were the technology partners for Akilimo Tanzania, providing all the tech services that they needed to you know, reach the last mile. So I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to discuss and you know, uh, dialogue on this. Thank you. And we are very happy that you can make it. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and of course, very far from uh, the least, but certainly the last right now, Peter, uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. I don't think you need introduction, but go ahead nonetheless. Thanks, Meda. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> My name is Peter. I'm an uh, agronomist with ITA based in Nairobi. And yes, I've been with Akilimo, I guess, since the very beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, and data scientist extraordinaire, if I may put that in myself. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Um, so with that, I will I will let you take over and give us um, the full story, the full scoop on Akinimo. Thank you so much for making the time for this. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so this uh, this webinar, what what, uh, what the four of us will be talking about is just maybe sort of summarizing a little bit what Akinimo is, what it has become today but also very much looking looking forward at sort of what the next frontiers are, the next things we want to do and, and, and where we want to take Akilimo. So that's going to be the, the story for today. Um, but just, uh, so just to, to kind of recap a little bit what Akilimo is, Akilimo is actually, uh, how do you say that, a portmanteau of two Swahili words for those who don't know. 
uh, it, 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 it has two words in it, Akili, which, is, which means smart, and Kilimo, um, uh, which means agriculture. And there's a bit of history behind the name, but I'll, I'll spare you that. Um, but it, it essentially, it, it, it brings together sort of that, that idea of, of technology and, and agriculture and people as well um, to, to bring sort of smart decision making to uh, cassava growers. So Akilimo still today is, is very much an, an advisory tool for, for improving uh, cassava yields. So that, that's sort of the primary objective, you could say. Um, but it's not just about improving yield. Uh, when, when we talk about a climo, we always say that it's, it's also very much about profit optimization because everything uh, we're trying to do with, with a climo just doesn't look at maximizing yield, but very much at uh, maximizing returns on investment in, in a cassava crop. So that, that market aspect is, is already from the very beginning very, very strongly prominent in, in the whole uh, idea, the whole concept of, of a climo. And lastly, also, uh, when we talk about Akilimo, Akilimo really tries to kind of provide customized advice. So it's not about providing general recommendation or not just rec general advice on some parts of it that can, can be quite general, but it really tries to kind of um, personalize almost the advice to, to individual farmers or to farmer groups. Um, and what we'll show today is, is, is really how far we've taken that. Um, to really offer um, that, that agronomy service to cassava growers. So that sort of uh, as an introduction. Now this slide, I, I think I've, I've probably shown it a, a million times, but I think it's still useful. What it basically shows is that Akilimo has, uh, on the one hand, it has all the, the evidence base, the models, uh, the frameworks uh, to, 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 to calculate recommendations, to, to provide that advice as well as the infrastructure to, to really um, uh, offer that advice in a, in a practical way uh, to the end users. So it has in the, cent the central piece, it has that, that recommendation engine in the cloud. It has all the data to, to run the, the calculations. Um, and then it interacts with a number of, of interfaces um, to provide recommendations either directly to farmers um, or through uh, extension workers to, to farmers. So that's essentially what, what Aquilimo is. Um, when we talk about Aquilimo, we often talk about the, the three main, uh, we call them components. So on the one hand, you have the backend, and, and this is also a slide that sort of um, shows a bit how, how the, um, the advice has evolved. So this is a, an example of, of how the framework develops fertilizer advice in this case. Um, running through all the decisions and the input parameters that the, that the user can provide, and then calling on the data to, to calculate those recommendations. So Akilimo basically offers that uh, as a first component, that framework um, to, to, to calculate recommendations um, at a particular scale or to, for a particular individual user. Then secondly, it has sort of a, a whole range of, of tools and interfaces. Um, initially, when we, we, we we set off, we, we actually didn't have a really good idea of, of what that actual tool will be, that advisory tool that we'll develop. And over time, we actually learned that one of the critical things we needed was, was really like this, this whole range of things. Because we have different types of partners, we have different types of users, we have different types of activities. And I think over time, uh, as we learned together with uh, the, the, the demand and the, and the scaling partners, we also learned that we need that diversity of tools um, to, to respond to those needs. And not all these tools are digital. Some of them are actually printable. We have, um, we have a, a training or an extension guide, which is in cartoon format and printed. Um, we've, we've got uh, uh, several dashboards, which are on the web and where you can actually calculate and download maps and, and recommendations. And then we've got very simple printable guides, one pagers and, and worksheets um, that extension ag agents can actually take to the farmer and, and do the recommendations on a piece of paper. So there's a whole variety of, of interfaces and that's sort of the, the second component. And then lastly, um, and a lot of the emphasis will, will be on, on, on that part today, Akilimo has also become a partnership or a network or an association of organizations as, as you'll learn about from, from so we set off with just a few partners, 
Um, but today we have over 270 partners across three countries um, working on, on Aquilimo. And, and a lot of that data, a lot of that information that we're getting through these partners is, is organized in dashboards. And um, these are just some extracts showing sort of the diversity that we have in that partner network. So there's a whole range of, of organizations. Some are private, some are public. Um, they kind of cover different segments of the value chain. Uh, from, from input to production to marketing, um, um, as well as, as, as uh, uh, financial services, which, which was one of the things that came in last, but is, is really critical. Um, so, so we have that whole network of partners, and also that is very much part of, of Aquilimo's uh, identity. So going back in time a bit, when, when we set off, I, I like to show this slide because this sort of this comes almost exactly from, from the proposal that was developed back in 2015. Um, it shows sort of how we developed our, our use cases. So, so Akai was, was uh, very much developed based on a, um, a use case model. And we had six, six use cases identified in each of the, the two countries, Nigeria and Tanzania. And then we had identified demand partners who had expressed those, those um, um, demands for those, those sort of solutions, agronomy solutions that they needed. And our scaling model was also very much uh, connected to that, to that use case model. So the scaling model was that, that each organization would offer a network of, of active extension workers who then reached um, a number of farmers. And sort of the impact of the project was calculated by simply multiplying kind of the number of extension agents that we expected to train some 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 level of efficiency in, in reaching uh, uptake of the recommendations and then the number of cassava growers that, that we intended to reach. Um, and so we have these six use cases. Um, but if you actually think about what we actually tried to do with that use case model in a, in a textbook, a use case model um, looks something like this. Um, and, and this is, I think, very known example. This is an online food ordering system, like maybe Uber Eats or something like that. Um, so you have these these actors, you have the, the the system, you have the relationships, and you have sort of the use cases or the functions that are needed to to fulfill the the, the needs of those uh, actors in in that system. So if you if actually go back one slide and and you look at it, you know we actually hadn't really refined or or clearly specified all that functionality which sits in that in that box of, of what then eventually Aquilimo became. So actually what I tried to do is, is kind of go back and, and actually draw it and, and try and sort of show what it is today and, and how much functionality we have we have built over the last seven years. And I even think that this is not really exhaustive. Um, there's sort of four big groups of, of functions that, that we built over time, not just the advisory functions, um, which are in the top left, um, but also functionality to actually train and certify extension agents, functionality to, to promote and demonstrate Aquilimo um, to, to farmers and to users, and functionality to actually monitor what is happening on the ground and, and to learn as a, as a partnership. Uh, and so I will not go into details, but, but there is there is quite quite a lot of things there. It's not just about providing fertilizer recommendations or to provide planting and harvest schedules, but also to provide sort of the functionality to make sure that that is done correctly, offering the basic good agronomy to, before you actually make an investment in fertilizer, teaching farmers how to make a, an accurate uh, yield measurement uh, in, in their field to be able to make decisions on, on, on whether um, it, it's the right time to harvest or they should still, still wait. And so on. So there are different functions, and these and these interact, and and all these uh, actors that we're dealing with, um, um, which are not just individual farmers and extension agents, but we also have to deal with farmer groups. So, for example, if you if you need to provide uh, fertilizer advice to a farmer group, you cannot do that in the same way as if you would do it in the on the farm of an individual grower. So all these all these things influenced how we had to provide our recommendations, how we had to um, uh, 
uh, visualize and, and package those recommendations. And all these actors actually interact with all that functionality in, in very specific ways. And I actually think looking back at, at, at how we worked at it, it would be really meaningful to actually uh, fully document all these, all these functions, all these tools that we built and, and what sort of specific uh, requirements we, we try to address. Um, so that's just going back to sort of uh, demonstrate that, that we went through this, um, I think, a little bit organically and, and we went along as we learned, we, we did new things. Um, and this is sort of our version of the six step uh, process that, that I think uh, everybody in EAA knows quite well, but maybe uh, flavored a little bit differently. Um, of, of how we went through it with Akai to, to develop um, Edimo. So it went from conceptualizing a solution to designing that framework. And, and in, the, in the first years, everything was really focused on, on doing the trials, um, building the analytics, testing, validating. Um, and then at the same time, also, also starting to build sort of some of those interfaces, even working with, with mockups. And going through, uh, especially for this second, third, and fourth step, through several iterations to, to actually come to, to, to the final product that, uh, or today's product, maybe not even the final product, it, it could still evolve, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, we went through through several iterations, improving it as we as we uh, as we went along, as we gathered feedback from from farmers. Um, to then implementing pilots and and then promoting and scaling, which is. Uh, very much what, what is happening now uh, today. Now, still back to that, that use case model, I, I still like to show this also one more time because, because I think initially in 2016, 2017, when we started this off, uh, we really had individual scientists and in individual demand partners working on individual use cases. So we, um, we use that use case model to define the priorities but we also used it as an implementation method during the, the first two years of the, of the project. And while that allowed us a lot of focus, there, there are certainly advantages to it, it, it also led to certain duplication of efforts. Um, same functionality was, was sort of developed in parallel slightly differently um, uh, by, by the different teams that, that were working on, on these individual use cases. Um, and I think, over time, and I think that happened mostly, I think, in 2018, 2019, we, we really reorganized our team. Um, some of that happened because we learned from our partners and because the partners also learned from each other that they just didn't need that single demand that they identified up front, but they also wanted kind of the whole package. They, they didn't need just the fertilizer advice or just the planting and harvesting advice. Um, we saw processing industries requiring intercropping advice because they know that uh, that is a way to motivate farmers um, to, to, in, to invest in their systems and increase their, their cassava production. We saw fertilizer companies also requesting for the basic good agronomy packages um, because without that investments in fertilizer are not profitable and so on. So, so kind of as we evolved, um, on the one hand, because of, of, of how the partners starting developing a network, but also on, on the other hand, because we as a team learned that, you know, working on these individual use cases separately is, is just not, is not cost effective. Um, we really reorganized the way we, we worked and, and we looked at features and functions rather than these use cases as, as individual tools. And that's really how, how Akilimu became sort of that, that whole comprehensive agronomy package that covers everything from, from land preparation um, up to harvest. And then I wanted to show this because I think that that also set the scene for, for what I think uh, the, the Agwise advisory framework has become today. And this is very much, uh, I think, learning from that expertise that we had from, from Akilimu. And, and where Meklid and her team is, is really, really setting up, a, a, I think, a, a framework of very high standards to, to modularly be able to, to kind of develop fertilizer advice for different crops and different geographies and have these different modules or, or building blocks to kind of modify and exchange um, 
depending on, on, on the specific requirements, depending on the availability of data, um, and, and depending on the specifics of, of individual crops as well. Um, um, so so the, there's, there's actually good examples of, of where we have really worked together with um, broader teams and, and, and been able to kind of pull together a lot of expertise, um, doing, for example, the, the crop modeling to get the water limited yields, uh, doing the analytics and, and analysis and the uh, combination of, of available data to be able to calibrate some of those uh, uh, components in, in, in the framework. And then being able to relatively quickly actually come up with, with fertilizer advice um, that is highly customizable for, for uh, maize in Kenya, for example, um, potato in, in the region. So this work has, has actually, uh, I think, very much uh, built on, on, on the lessons and the learnings that we've had with Akilimo. And I think looking forward now, Akilimo could again also really benefit from, from Agwise because I think Akilimo could actually become the vehicle um, to, to now kind of onboard uh, advice on, on maize and rice um, because this is really a, a critical requirement um, that the partner associations have uh, to be able to kind of sustain and, and grow Akilimo. So we see within the network of the partners that we have today that, that just working on cassava alone uh, in the countries where we work is, is not sufficient for that for that partnership, um, especially, for example, if we want to attract uh, the financial uh, sector, um, focusing on, on crops like maize and rice is, is really critical for that. So one of the kind of most urgent demands that, that, that we have now for uh, in sort of the next near future work would be to, to adapt some of those um, tools and especially our, our printable materials, I think, uh, that we have for cassava uh, to, to, to maize and rice. So uh, I really wanted to emphasize that because I think you'll, you'll hear my colleagues talk about that as well later on. And then I'll stop here and I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Sam, uh, Thompson. Uh, th thank you very much, Peter. Uh, for, uh, generally, uh, the Akilimo uh, was uh, built on sustainability, and uh, this is right from the beginning in terms of uh, engaging with partners to ensure there is a sort of alignment into what they are doing, and they can integrate that into uh, policies around the companies and the organizations so that they can use it continuously as part of uh, maybe their operations. And uh, based on that, we were able to align this into two different pathways in terms of seeing uh, extension agents and the lead farmers that could actually promote the use of uh, the different products that were developed in Akilimu to align it into what they are doing. So there were processes that were involved and uh, the project then, Akai, and up to now as EIA is just a facilitator who is out of the box or try to facilitate the process to ensure that partners are taking the lead in terms of ownership. And they are also moving alongside in terms of uh, looking into learnings and other things that are required uh, to be done uh, generally. Then going forward, uh, we also ensure in terms of the, the, the learning through monetary and evaluation, that was established to track uh, users. And that is along a process of not just looking at the, those that we have reached, but we go beyond that to actually see a sort of a behavioral changes in terms of the use of those tools and to also affirm what they have changed in their practices, but ultimately to look at benefit in terms of quantify what are they really getting from that, moving in terms of income, livelihood, uh, and other things generally. And that aspect has really uh, helped in terms of learning, which uh, was part of what has uh, assisted the involvement of Akilimo, and uh, which has led into uh, having a lot of uh, partners that are involved. Uh, and generally, the, the learning that has been attained uh, from monitoring and evaluation has really led to the aspect of 
getting different things that evolved in terms of the extension agent. Uh, we were track, so tracking to look at the female participation as extension agent. The total number, Peter has mentioned that uh, the number of uh, farmers that we have reached up to today, well over 400,000, and we have an 85% active user. And in, uh, what we mean by active user, those are people, categories of user who have changed their practices, and they have integrated the use of Akilimo in the different steps that we are having that has also involved. And that has translated into benefit to them in terms of a increase in yield, which has translated into a increase in income to them. And this aspect has assisted many of the partners to be able to work with the partner, uh, uh, some of the farmers supplying to them, particularly the processing company, in terms of looking at competitiveness in terms of price. So it becomes easier for them to mobilize more farmers because they are making a lot of gains that is helping them in the whole process. But the data we have generated has actually helped us to have gotten a lot of insight. And that is where we were able to look into female part women participation, which was low, and some things were also done in terms of uh, how do we integrate more female into what we are doing generally. Then it has also helped in terms of uh, integration of lead farmer approach. We have an uh, emergence of private sector participation, policy-related issue through the public sector, and so many other things, uh, which also involve the, the, the use of a uh, diverse of different formats in terms of the tools that we have generated. Uh, issue of local languages was coming up. and But what has actually helped the whole process is those data generated actually helped us to have uh, concrete learnings that we were able to use to keep on improving and to keep on moving with partners that are involved, which is increasing by the day in terms of what we are doing uh, generally. Yeah, then beyond the, 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 the support from our side, one of the things that also emerged is the bundling services. The, the need to look into uh, Akilimo as a core innovation and to see other complementary innovation as enabling the process in order to ensure that we have lots of uh, services that are needed to, to go alongside with the innovation for, for, for things to move. And this is actually the point of attraction where business model uh, emerges, where a lot of partners want to participate, the, the, the fertilizer company want to sell their fertilizer, and this is integrated. Essential services were integrated into many of what the partners are doing. And we have banks now participating from Nigeria and Tanzania want to be part of the process. Now, it, 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 it was able to help to have a lot of direct relationship in the value chain and to have uh, the required agronomy support services that is needed among the partners and occasionally from IIT to be able to support some other things. And sales of input has improved with the use of the tool and the repayment process has also helped in terms of uh, other partners that are looking into the process to be part of the uh, Akilimo journey. Yes, I will from here hand over to my colleague, Samson, who is going to take up uh, from here. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Thompson. All right, so um, like um, both Peter and uh, Dr. Thompson have stressed, um, one critical factor that has helped the success of uh, um, Akilimo up to this point is basically the fact that um, the interactions have been built on very strong partnerships, um, which has helped us navigate through um, beyond the primary objectives that were set uh, initially at the, at the beginning of the project to, to navigate through bottlenecks that arose. In fact, we discovered that at every point, one problem was an opportunity for another partner to come in. And so uh, we have had a broad extension of partnership that has helped us um, to achieve all that has been done up to this moment. Now, um, in 2021, when uh, the official period of the project was being uh, wind, uh, winding down, um, the, the planning meeting in Ibadan, um, there came, a, there came a, a suggestion that we should actually have a kind of sustainability structure that allows us to be able to carry 
the findings and the output of the Akilimo project, uh, uh, of the Akai project beyond just the lifespan of the project, and then let it also be able to uh, be continuously available for other partners to use. And this is where the idea of the country associations came up. Now, basically, the country associations are the next frontier that we're looking at for the sustainability of Akilimo. And um, there were a, a number of objectives that were primarily designed as the, the bottom line for the formation of this association. The first thing is we want to maintain all of the interfaces and the training materials that have been developed by the project. We want to keep this continuously available for farmers and ensure that they are available in a manner that is relevant and up to date. So that if there are changes, for example, maybe there are new prices regimes, maybe there are new products that have been developed, or maybe there are additional information on weather or, or other advisory. This can be put into the system and the um, advisory updated and is still kept relevant uh, at, as at when due. Of course, we also recall that we at, mo at the moment have a farmer base reach of about uh, 400,000 plus farmers. We feel also that while this is a very good advantage, there is a continuous need to grow this database. There are several areas where cassava is still being produced that have not um, had the influence of Akilimo going into them. And so we want to keep expanding the user base and to continue fostering uh, partnership amongst partner organizations who are into the cassava value chain so that we get more and more farmers on board who are using Akilimo to get solutions to their um, um, production problems, as well as expanding the frontiers that they are reaching to improve their productivity and uh, profitability. We also want to keep doing this in such a way that it is cost effective. We want to keep uh, the, the training uh, component of Akilimo alive. Now, beyond the lifespan of the project where farmers were, uh, where extension agents were paid some incentives to carry out activities, we are looking at a full integration of Akilimo into the operations of the partner organization, such that it becomes a part of their system. And this has worked practically with a lot of partners, and we, ex we, we imagine that it can be extended to many more. We have also had instances where we see some big ecosystem players in the cassava value chain or who are using products of cassava, who are interested in taking up APIs for Akilimo to integrate into their own system or into the systems of their partners who do the actual cassava production for them. We are also exploring an opportunity to say, can these partners just plug in directly um, using APIs and then be able to still assess the Akilimo adversity? Then we are also looking at an expansion of Akilimo advisory to other crops beyond cassava, primarily into maize and rice, like uh, the earlier speakers have, have stressed, because we also discovered that it is not just uh, going to be economically sustainable to limit this only to cassava. Then we also want to continue um, getting insights uh, from the monitoring, evaluation, and learning activities that have been instituted as part of the project. And we want to keep this up because they offer very good insight, especially to, for taking business decisions uh, for the various partners that have come on the project. And so we generally see the Akilimo associations in uh, the respective countries, uh, Nigeria, Tanzania, and subsequently Ghana, as the next frontier that will help us to sustain the use of Akilimo. Now, what is the purpose for this organization? Basically, the Akilimo associations have a mission of empowering farmers and other value chain actors by providing them with the required technical assistance, training, and uh, digital services, and critically also value chain linkages that will help them for uh, foster the adoption and promotion of Akilimo tools. Basically, like I mentioned earlier, we have discovered that it is not just enough to go with uh, the advisory on agronomy. We have come to discover that bundling of a lot of services, including linkages to input and output markets, is very critical for this uptake of this advisory by farmers. And so this is a critical mission that the Kilimo Association has set out to achieve. Our vision is to create a digitally empowered and resilient agricultural sector where the Akilimo tools are widely adopted and they are used optimally 
to produce uh, to, to improve productivity and the uh, livelihood of the farmers in a sustainable in a sustainable manner. So we actually foresee Akilimo as um, a, a tool that can be integrated into even national agri, agri extension structures across the various countries, and that can help to foster collaboration and innovation in a way that helps um, all relevant partners to make informed decisions in uh, agricultural transformation. And in line with this, we have actually uh, worked with the respective country associations to develop a kind of structure for our Kilimo um, organizations within the, the, the respective countries. Now, what you have on the slide depicts what we have in Nigeria. And this structure has undergone um, quite a lot of changes, uh, like uh, the previous speakers also mentioned, to get to where it is today. And of course, we know it is evolving. This is not the final uh, product. So we have um, a board of trustees already set up in Nigeria. We have um, a national executive uh, that we have held elections into. And we also have very critically the global Akilimo platform that consists of three key teams, the technical team, the business development and grants team, as well as the content development and review teams, which are going to be working very closely across the countries to be able to manage the interfaces as well as the advisory as it is today to accommodate whatever changes that we might have in terms of uh, um, materials or um, climate information or even price or relevant soil data that might change in the future. So we also have some peculiarities um, that, that are specific to countries. So for example, while we have the state and zonal structure in Nigeria, we also have uh, zones in Tanzania. And this might be a bit different in Ghana, but we are looking at a system that helps accommodate these different structures across the respective territories in the different countries. So at this point, I will let um, um, my colleague, um, Patrick, take over to talk about the different things, what specifically they do, and uh, the expectations from um, each of those teams in terms of delivery. Patrick, over to you. Thank you, Samson. So um, before we go any further from here, we need to understand that I, you know one of the things uh, that has led us to write proposals since the 1990s is because government did a lot of research uh, in the 60s, 70s, yeah? But most of this research ended up in shelves um, at the institutions, but it never got to reach the farmer. This is one of the things that we, were, we are trying to solve with Akilimo, trying to see how that content can be relevant and can reach the desired audience who are the farmers. So with that, looking at the Akilimo structure and how we could move um, along and ensure that the content stays relevant uh, because the content has to be dynamic for it to make sense for also the end users, but also, you know, what can we create this as a business opportunity to, you know, to further the agenda because there is no funding moving forward. So with these, the three business, uh, so, sorry, the three teams are uh, the content business and the tech. Uh, there is also one which is the admin that uh, will be the guys who ad, uh, do the administration, uh, administrative work for now their associations. But for us, these are the core, the core teams. So for the content, we are looking at the team that will continuously look at the content that is available and see how that content is going to be updated, reviewed, and also translated to multiple languages, uh, considering that these will be going to multiple countries and areas that you know the project was never involved. The other team will be the business team. With this, the business team is really tasked at uh, ensuring that you know there is revenue coming in, there is revenue being generated, you know, there is also brokering, you know, relationships between the new partners, because most of the partners who are in the associations right now are the guys who have worked for close to 10 years, uh, you know, with each other. So they are, you know, they are aware of each other, they understand uh, the, 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 you know, the strengths and the weaknesses of each other. But now when you get new partners with diverse you know, mindsets, you know, you need, you know, a team that is able to broker that relationship. 
the the team is also tasked at marketing and promoting Akilimo, you know, so that you know we can get the new partners. The third team that is um, you know very critical is the tech team. There is a lot of technology that has been developed uh, using Akilimo, uh, but how can we keep this technology alive? You know, how can we sustain the systems? How can we keep you know uh, price data that is relevant for you know, uh, fertilizer recommendations up to date. So this is the team that is going to take care of, of that. But also, remember I mentioned about the dusty, you know, shelves that were there in government. One of the things that is happening right now is projects are developing digital dust, dusty shelves. You know, there's a lot of data that is out there, that, but it still sits in a website somewhere, but it never reaches the farmer. So we want to see how we can continuously innovate to ensure that data or that content reaches the, the end user. So looking at the business team and uh, some of the you know, revenue generation um, aspects that we were looking at, you know, we were looking at you know, what can we do to you know, generate uh, revenue for, for the associations to ensure that they are kept alive. These are some of the options. Of, of course, the, the list is not conclusive. So we can keep adding these continuously uh, as we engage uh, new partners. So the first one is the Akilimo training income. So one of the things that Akilimo did was uh, develop a community of trainers that were trained on how to train you know, uh, on issues Akilimo. So this is, these teams can continuously keep you know, generating income for the association by training organizations or individuals or farmer groups that need that uh, service at a fee. And then uh, in terms of the members of the association, you know, annual you know, membership dues will be also expected to rake in a bit of money to keep the association's functions uh, working. Uh, I, when I go back to the Akilimo trainers, you know, we, you know, when, when, when they are trained, they will be paying a fee, but, you know, they will need to revalidate, you know, their, you know, their certificates annually to ensure that, you know, we keep a list of the most current and the most up-to-date, you know, individuals going out to train. There will also be corporate partnerships where organization uh, membership contributions, you know, we, you know, for each corp uh, corporate that joins a Kilimo uh, association, they will be needed to pay some amount, you know, to keep uh, their membership. The, another thing that we've seen um, demanded by the farmers is, you know, uh, input aggregation. We find that most of the time we go and talk about fertilizer, but they, there are other aspects that farmers need. So we also need to, we, the association will be looking at ways of bringing these uh, inputs together because most of the partners that form the associations will be coming from the diverse you know, uh, market segments. Another thing uh, that, you know, looking at Africa, um, actually, uh, you know, the average or the, me the, the median you know, uh, age, you, you know, it's really made up of youth. And we really need to use the digital tools that are being developed, you know, to harness, you know, uh, that reach of the youth because they are interested in technology. Uh, the other thing that we, we are looking at as a way of generating, you know, revenue is the trust support. So mobilizing, you know, funds through the goodwill uh, and linkages between, you know, the partners. Another thing will be the annual conference uh, where we've seen some conferences like the GSM conference where you know, participants pay some fee to attend. So again, that's also in the pipeline to, uh, to be a revenue generating you know, item. Uh, last but not least is advertisement uh, opportunities. So there could be opportunities to advertise through the brochures, but also as the content is going out to farmers, let's say it's SMS talking about, uh, you know, how to grow your crop right. You know, we'll be able to advertise, you know, partner products like fertilizers uh, and other things, you know, through those SMS services to generate some, some income. So when you look at revenue, you know, you cannot look at revenue isolated, you know, revenue, 
for us hinges on the consolidation of user bases uh, or user databases. If you look at all these partners, each partner has their own database. But if you are a partner X with a database of 200 farmers, that's the only farmers you can reach. But when you bring in uh, you know, a consolidation of all the databases, you might find like you, know, you have a consolidated database of a million farmers. And if you're selling your product and you want visibility to your product, then it means you will have access to you know, an additional uh, database of farmers. So this for us is one of the things we are looking at to ensure that you know, uh, you know, partners are motivated to be in their associations. So uh, when we were in Nairobi, we sat down and we thought of a structure that would work for the association, uh, not only association, but also the Akilimo going forward. And this is what we came up with. Uh, for us, we need, we, we looked at it that, you know, all these things has to be, uh, have to be supported by, uh, by technology. And with technology, we are looking at having a system that is more or less the global, you know, template that can be used in more multiple countries and multiple associations, but also this system will be sending back data back to the akilimo.org so that, you know, we have a global uh, dashboard where, you know, you can visualize what's happening in multiple countries and multiple country data analysis, you know, and comparisons can be, can be done. Uh, beyond now the associations, there will be a public dashboard where you know you can get a few insights of you know from the country, but again once you register and log in, you will get the advanced database uh, dashboard. Sorry, where you can visualize more you know more data. But for the paying guys, uh, there will be they will get a subdomain, so the partners will have a subdomain where they can visualize all their data. But they will also be able to access other aspects of the system, uh, like the dynamic crop calendars. They will be able to send bulk SMS to their farmers, but also they will be able to reach out to the entire database. You know, uh, and with this, we are looking at it as a way of also generating some income. So when I look, when we look at the tech teams and and the content team, we've already talked about the business team. But the con the tech team, the responsibilities they will have is really customizing uh, the templates uh, for the new country associations, but also you know designing an a, a system that has harmony that cuts across uh, the, the entire system. Uh, sorry, the entire you know uh, associations but also the uh, you know, encryption of personal data to conform with you know, global uh, personal data protection systems, but also maintain the systems you know, and ensure you know, there are policies that have been put to regulate you know, access uh, of the data. So all this, uh, you know, I won't go to the you know, nitty gritties of it, but you know, these are the roles that will keep, because we want to have an harmonized system. We want to have harmonized uh, data collection so that when even when we are doing multiple you know country uh, data analysis we are able to analyze because there is harmony in the data the content team will be tasked we you know with now they will be the custodians of the user data because the all the data for the country you know will be sitting within the associations so they will also align that with the country poly, uh, data prote personal data protection policies because they will be diverse each country has their own but they will also be able to customize some of the you know, content, the Akilimo guides and all that, to ensure that you know, they conform to their you know, country, but also they are translated to suit their country. Well, so one of the things I mentioned was the dynamic crop calendar. You know, this is one of the initiatives we think and we feel like, you know, will propel the entire thing moving forward because we said, you know, content has to be alive. So what we are proposing is we will have static, you know, crop calendars for multiple crops, but these will be able to be modified, you know, according to the need. Right now, there is a crisis with climate change and all that. You know, the planting date has changed. You know, it's not the same as it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So we need that to be dynamic. And with this, by having a dynamic crop calendar, we are looking at a way of 
probably you know generating income for you know communities or you know individuals who want uh, you know a crop mod uh, sorry they want a crop calendar that aligns with their community so these also will look at multiple you know languages uh, you know support you know, for the various communities and all that. So this is one of the things that we feel, you know, moving forward is if supported, you know, it could be, but at least we need that static, you know, crop calendar developed for the multiple countries so that it can be dynamically changed over the course of the years. Uh, with this, I will land over to Thompson so that he can take us uh, through the scaling model for the associations. Thank you. Thompson, Thompson are you muted? Yes, you can't. We don't see you and we don't hear you. Sorry. Okay, yes. now we do. Go ahead. Yes, get, getting that structure from the association, uh, from our site as a part of the CG, we have supported the association to look into having a very robust strategic scaling process that is going to be diverse in nature, cutting across different countries that could be leveraged on by the association. And one of the major things that we have done is that we work more with the tech team, the business team, and the content team to be able to conceptualize this in terms of how do we still have a sort of a maybe support from the IETA as member of the CG Center who remains as a technological center with our EIA solution. And with that one, we can align together with the association who is still driving the process to see which aspect we need to support in terms of how they move. Now, the association want to track everyone who is using the product. And that is why if you are going to have access to all the, the tools, which is a tool you can have access to is free, but they require the need for you to register and they create a sort of login for you. And that gives them the idea of having a, a information about you, your organization, number of farmers in your network, and the association can determine the backstopping arrangement that you really need. And in terms of that, all the tools that are in place will be able to help to, to scale the process. So new members will be mobilized. There will be registration of new users, which will be discovered through the, the, the platform that has been created. And insight will be generated as well, just like EIA is doing the same as part of the support, which is coming to an end. The association will continue that. They can view the insights they are generating and they can use this to follow up with each of the partners, knowing how many are using Akilimo, which kind of format are they using, what challenges are they facing, what is still be required in terms of them having a sort of smooth, free uh, the scaling process. So that, 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 that's a structure that has been agreed. Then this will happen at multiple country, Tanzania, Nigeria, and Ghana are ongoing in the process, and uh, more countries will be joining the process, be part of the association through their global uh, platform that has been established uh, generally. Then, uh, the, uh, having gone this far, I, I will just quickly summarize with the remaining slides, uh, the, 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 which is basically what Akilimo still needs and which is also being seen as an opportunity for excellence in agronomy. And uh, this has been presented in terms of the structure for content, business, and the tech, and the need to look into some of the gap we have identified and see what we can still support as a facilitator. Uh, in, in terms of content, there are still a lot of things that we need to look into, maybe a lot of local languages are being demanded. The association is ready to get uh, members who are going to do the translation themselves, but they need a guiding process in terms of how have we done it before based on local languages we are having, then how to share knowledge in terms of what they are generating. And in terms of the business, one of the major things coming up is the need to actually analyze all the different models that they have discovered, which one can be a quick win for the association and that will begin to generate money so that they can move on their own and begin to be able to run effectively. So that, that, that's also another area that we can still look into uh, generally. But 
The biggest aspect is the tech aspect, which is very huge. We have few uh, tech company as member of the association. We have Zoacel in Nigeria. We have uh, Isoko in Tanzania. We also have uh, AfriFarm uh, Sync also in Nigeria. In Ghana, we have identified a particular company who is likely going to join the process. But notwithstanding, many of their tech staff are so much busy that they require that getting their time into this has been quite challenging. But to, to be more specific, uh, I, I will go into the next slide to, to, to identify some key aspects which is very much important for excellence in agronomy to look into, particularly, and which is also going to be a sort of win-win because there is going to be a sort of a effective scaling for the farmer reach, which we continue. We, stay, we can still guide this process to see how many farmers are being reached, which of the new EIA solution can the association take up to use, which we can also still backstop with them in terms of using new solutions that we are generating that can also uh, be part of the process of what they are doing. And expansion continues, additional countries to be covered. The association has a vision in terms of looking into more countries, then developing a lot of robust capacity building strategy, which we can also look into that. Then in terms of customization and localization of some of the tools is required. A lot of our solution are very effective and they are working well. The association is able to localize the use of those tools and they can be able to give specific data of users uh, to, 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 the, to excellence in agronomy in terms of what we can do and all that. And generally so many other things that we can work with them in terms of their use, in terms of a, Ensuring the, 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 the use of data for decision making in scaling process is also put in place. Now, the, 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 just like it was mentioned at the beginning, over around 127 partners across the countries, this is going to grow. And this will also be an opportunity for excellence in agronomy to tap into this process to see which of these partners can utilize which technology and which of the which of the location where are they based how do we trickle down the effect to small other farmers that they are in their network with, with, with the whole of this we can have a sort of robust sustainability and long-term viability for what uh, akilimo is doing and this can be a learning even to other solutions that we have developed to see a sort of a sustainability strategic options that we can follow for other solutions that we are having, because I'm very sure not all the solution may be relevant for, for, for Akilimo Association, but we can learn from this process to see how we can manage and take up the use of uh, innovation sustainably as we move forward uh, generally. This will be the summary. I know it's not going to end there in terms of what support can still come from EIA to, to push the process, but the structure is in place. The association is running, the executives are there. They can push a lot of things on their own, which they are already doing. The tech team is where we have a lot of challenges to see what can we do to support that process. Currently, uh, the association on their own, they are developing their dashboard, but at a point they were stuck. So occasionally can we do, can, can EIA support a sort of occasional intervention to help some of the tech team members so that they can also move further in terms of what they are doing. So thank you very much. That, that, that would be the summary on, on, on that. Thank you so much, Thompson. Uh, thank you to all four of you. This has been absolutely marvelous. And I think, you know, the, the level of interest is really, really high. I see, um, you know, at, at, at various times, I've seen over 80 people. Uh, participating in this. So well done for everything you've done here. It's Absolutely magnificent. It blows me away. I mean, I, I think I'm going to have to listen to the recording again myself, even though I'm somewhat immersed in, in, in this kind of work, um, to, to get a full picture of everything you've done. It's very, very impressive. Um, let me launch into the, the questions first that have been put in the, in the uh, question and answer box. Um, there's a question here from Saheed Adams. Um, how can the Akirimo technical team effectively collaborate across different countries to address common backend issues? Um, this is, I know this is something you've grappled with a lot. Um, I don't know, Peter, if you want to take that. I mean, uh, Saeed is interested in, in ensuring seamless functionality 
of the Akinimo app on a global scale. And I think this relates to some of the issues you faced and um, tried to overcome. Do you want to take a stab at it? Yeah, sure, I, I, I can. Um, um, maybe, Patrick, you know, you can come in and, and compliment if there's anything I'm, I'm forgetting to say. Um, well, first of all, we made the, the, the tech team is actually building on infrastructure that we set up in the Akai project, which was always uh, set up in a way that it actually serves multiple countries. We never really set up different structures for, for, the, for the two countries. Um, so a lot of that, that infrastructure is in place for, for collecting uh, farmer registration data, for collecting use and uptake from, from our interfaces. Uh, even the recommendations and the advisory itself, that, that sort of processes weather and soil data, uh, does that does that sort of across across countries? Um, so it's always been set up in that way to to serve more than more than one country. And I think in the in the in the organogram that that Samson showed, um, even though you'll have a tech content and business team within each country association. These these people, especially the tech people, will be part also of a, a broader tech team that that is that is actually supporting that that global uh, Akilimo, Akilimo platform. Um, so even though there might be sort of tweaks and 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 and, and sort of differences between the countries, I, I think the the partners are already sort of bringing together resources across the the tech companies that Thompson mentioned to kind of you know pull resources together and 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 build. Uh, a, a global infrastructure, and currently they're still relying on on servers and, and infrastructure that we've built under the Akai project. So there is uh, still still harmonization at, at that level as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think the, the willingness is there for partners to collaborate. The, the systems are there as they inherit them from the from from the project, and I think moving forward, you know, the, the attracting sort of more and and, and Technical partners will, will be quite Peter, I think we lost you. No, I stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Um, yes, uh, I don't know. Patrick, do you want to come in and add anything to what Peter said, or, or should we move on to the next question? Yeah, sure, I can add a bit. Uh, so the idea is really, and this is why I was talking about the global platform, yeah? We have this template that will cut across multiple countries, you know? And, you know, the composition of the global tech team is ideally, you know, tech guys from the multiple countries that are going to form now that union. And, you know, it will be very easy for us to solve such issues because, you know, we are bringing expertise from multiple countries, multiple, you know, tech companies. If I can be biased a bit and talk about Isoko, Isoko is running in 16 countries plus, you know, and it's still, still the same platform. So it's much easier to, you know, deal with the, you know, te template that, you know, is cutting across multiple countries than having issues, you know, solved at the country level. So this is what we envision, uh, ensuring that, you know, most of these innovations and, you know, uh, mo most of these issues are solved, you know, on the bigger platform, which is now the global template. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there are, there were at least, there was another question too. I think there were three questions here about Ghana, one comment and, and right now one question. Um, so, so the comment is from William saying that we're committed to establishing solid partnerships in Ghana uh, to successfully implement uh, uh, Akilimo. Um, and, and then another uh, co uh, question really from Emmanuel, who is worried that, that Ghana's lagging a bit. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, I, I'm not sure that that's, that's necessarily the case, but um, we can hopefully reassure you. So he, he wants to know, Emmanuel wants to know what the next level of action is for Ghana. If you want to reiterate some of that, um, that would be really helpful. So I don't know if, Thompson, would you be able to take that one and then hand over perhaps to um, Samson if there's anything? Yeah, I can put uh, yeah. some point on that. Uh, we are really moving in Ghana. And uh, currently we have over 600 farmers that are connected into the use of Akilimo in Ghana. We know that is limited compared to Nigeria and Tanzania, but 
Even William himself is one of the very strong partner in uh, in Ghana, one of our contact person that is looking into that. So we we are going to work closer with uh, with that. Sorry about the noise. Uh, we work closer with, uh, with 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 Williams to look into other things that we ensure that is going to happen in Ghana. And not only that, the the IT has also agreed that I spend more time now in Ghana. So we are going to replicate what has happened in Nigeria and Tanzania in Ghana. I'm going to spend more of my time there. Thank you. Excellent. Good to know that, Thompson. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so there are a couple of questions about sort of pertaining to individual farmers. One is sort of more generally, how does Akilima work with the individual farmers? Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether that, um, you know, you've talked about extension agents, uh, mediated uh, services, you've talked about printable guides. There is an Akilimo app for individual farmers. I'm not sure if there's anything more you want to add to that. Uh, that's a question from uh, Aditunji. And then there's a related, kind of related question from Charles Nuokoro that asks, um, if farmers are uh, able to put up available produce on Hakimo. I know that's not the case currently, uh, but through the associations, um, I don't know if um, Samson, you might want to uh, sort of address this either with a, you know, know that, that we can't handle that or there are links in the, in the thinking that you want to, you're working on perhaps um, cementing to make that possible. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, thank you. So let me start first um, with the, the initial question on uh, how individual farmers can use Akilimo. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that we agreed on during the last um, meeting we had in Nairobi a couple of um, weeks ago is um, to offer an avenue for farmers to actually self-register on, uh, on the Akilimo platform um, using um, a, a QR code. So farmers who attend um, trainings or events that are organized in relation to Akilimo can actually register on uh, on the platform um, with with that um, with that process. However, I would also be quick to add that experience has shown, especially around uh, Nigeria now, that um, we 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 are best working with the farmers in small clusters or groups. Um, usually that we refer here to, um, to as cooperative societies, small cooperatives of maybe 25 to 30 members. And so we are as much as possible encourage the farmers to link up with um, the closest co cooperative around them. I mean, basically for a lot of reasons. One of it is that they enjoy economies of skill in terms of access to uh, inputs at better pricing. They also have um, access to better negotiation when they want to sell their output. So yes, it is possible for a farmer to assess the application, um, um, use the Aquilimo app on its own. He can also register at an event on its own, but then we encourage that the farmer belongs to a cooperative society. On the, on the second question of um, having access to um, inputs or even markets uh, on the Aquilimo platform, it is not currently up at the moment, but of course, that is one of the things that we have envisioned for the Akilimo platform, um, especially through the country associations. So when, when the dashboard is up and running, we are going to um, actually give opportunities for um, subscribers who, who, who are paid subscriber organizations to actually um, place adverts, sell their products, send out bulk SMS to farmers on the platform. And th that is one of the advantage actually that they will get from being in the association. So instead of being able to assess only the 20 or 30,000 farmers in their own network, they are actually able to reach over 400,000 farmers with their messages on the Akilimo platform. And of course they can um, have contact phone numbers through which the farmers can reach them. And of course link up to their nearest um, sales outlet or their retail outlet around the location. Um, the same way, farmer associations can also be able to put information out to say, oh, we have um, XYZ tons of cassava available for sale at so, so, so location on the platform. And then interested processing companies can also pick this up from the platform once the dashboard is fully set up. So these are some of the things that we have in the offer. 
I hope that does answer some of the questions. To it does, and I'm very impressed. Thank you, thank you. I mean, I, I thought I couldn't be more impressed, but uh, you continue to amaze me. Thank you very much, Samson. That's that's good to know. Um, there's a there's a question here uh, from Murtala, who's uh, part of the BOT of Akilimo Nigeria Association, and he he would like to know how EIA uh, will support sort of more of a unified approach, uh, a strategically uh, harmonized unified approach to align Akilimo's objectives on a global platform for multiple countries. Um, so I, I believe you're talking about Agwais there, uh, Murtala. Peter, do you want to take a stab at that? I can I can weigh in, but I think um, maybe you want to step in uh, uh, and 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 add to that perhaps the lessons that that are that you've learned from Akilima that will be particularly useful for Agwise. You already mentioned some of them, but I think it would be good to hear that. No, I think actually you or or Manda should be answering that question. <laughs> You never cease to be provocative, but okay. Um, so, so just I, I still want to hear about the the key lessons learned, but but I will answer the question by saying that Murtala, if you remember, Peter um, talked about Agwise or fairly early on in his presentation. Um, the the and I I realized also that I forgot to introduce myself when I started out. So my role in excellence in agronomy is uh, as lead of the of the um, what we call the transform work package basically this work package or work stream deals largely with data and analytics and based on what we've learned from Akilimo, uh, we we knew that what we want, what we needed to do where the ask was was to broaden the Akilimo framework take the very very important lessons that we've learned from it um, broaden it to be much more generalizable. So, so Akinimo right now is focused on cassava. Um, Agwise is is aims to offer uh, advice advisories for for multiple crops. And Peter already showed you some of the preliminary work, uh, the the results for uh, maize and, and rice. I'm uh, sorry, maize and potato. Uh, but but there are results for rice as well um, for particular countries uh, currently. But the idea is to be able to get to, to a point where I could be uh, somebody like you asking for um, uh, recommendations for our fertilizer advice for potato in, in uh, Nigeria or Ghana or wherever it might be, a new, a new place, and uh, would be able to get it within, say, 30 days or so. Um, now, this is largely dependent on a lot of different factors, uh, good, reliable, quality data being uh, the, the key, and, and that's where we we really um, stumble a little bit because the data availability is an issue, and and um, the quality and reliability is an issue. Uh, but but that that is really where what we're trying to do in terms of um, aligning the objectives of Akilimo uh, in in a much more global way and a generalizable way. So so drawing on the on the machine learning approaches, the crop models, you know, all of the scientific underpinnings. Um, to 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 develop the recommendations using Akilimo's approach in terms of the six steps, seven steps, I think, to to um, to go through and make sure that what we stand up is a well validated, piloted uh, set of recommendations, um, and then use Akilimo's uh, um, ways of of uh, uh, disseminating that that information, knowing that you know uh, uh, we we will not be able to succeed just through um, uh, uh, sort of a digital uh, dissemination uh, system that it, that it it will need to be a multi pronged approach such as Akilimo has has uh, developed and then I think the absolute key learning for us would be in terms of how these things are sustained in the countries uh, using the similar structures to what you have set up already with the associations I think there's a huge amount of learning there uh, that that we need to sort of uh, digest and 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 put in a sort of a, um, a, a package that goes along with, with the advisory so that new, you know, this can be quickly sort of unfolded, unrolled and deployed um, in multiple countries. Um, so that's what I will say. I don't know, Peter, do you want to add to it? Or Mandla, I know you're in the audience somewhere. If you want to jump in, please do, either one of you. Or Thompson. Silence. Okay. No, I think, I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, 
we have a question from Rashid, um, which I will move to next. Um, do you have metrics uh, or know the numbers of partners using this platform? So the answer to that is yes, but I will let um, Thompson go in. But I, I think Rashid is interested in by month, by season, uh, and do you collect their feedback uh, about this platform? So the answer to all of that is yes. But uh, Thompson, do you want to come in here and, yes. and talk a little bit more? Yes, uh, Meda, just as you have said, uh, the question is yes. We, we have the system in place, which I explained, but there's no time to go into the details. We have a system in place that track every user and we do a, a monthly phone survey to, to, to be able to see how effective is it in terms of the use. So we have all those data and there's a dashboard for each. Each of the partner, they have access to that, but we are we are partitioned the access in such a way that you cannot access the data of another partner, except you have discussed with that partner and such partner is going to share with you by him or herself. And uh, broadly in terms of EIA, I think that is also happening now because I've attended some meeting with some of the some of the use cases where this is also being put in place uh, generally. So I think that the process is in place, it's a rigorous process, but we are also we also want partners to take ownership of this process as well, because the data is not about the project alone, it's about you need to learn, and you can also use the data to improve your supply chain system. You can use it to have an idea of typology of farmers that you are having. You can use it to respond to needs of farmer based on what is needed by each categorization of farmer that we are having in your network. But it is in place, and uh, that can be uh, maybe uh, integrated into the system of the farmers. And it is the same modality that the association is also looking into to ensure they have data of users. And that's why the starting point is that if you are coming to the platform, you are going to give details about your organization, your name, the network of farmers you are having. Then the association can follow up thereafter in order to capture most of the required data. But I don't know if Peter wants to give more specific. Uh, information on this as well. Uh, no, I, I think you've said it. I mean, like you said, there is, I think uh, Patrick showed the slide, you know, there is a system in place. Maybe the only thing to add is that um, we, we have sort of standardized data on, on each of the, the, the five steps in the, uh, the, the monitoring and learning framework. Um, but what we accommodate is that for partners that, that, that come sort of on board and that don't have a digital infrastructure in place themselves, they, they can rely on a, on a general infrastructure that we've built. Um, then for partners that are already, you know, digitally enabled and that have their own uh, software or, or infrastructure in place, uh, they're also we're setting up procedures to, to actually just exchange data through um, either bulk uploads or, or API. So so there's yeah technically also infrastructure in place to, to make sure that, that all these functions that you're mentioning and that process that we have in place um, is, is actually running smoothly. And, and that allows sort of uh, today kind of every 24 hours uh, updated data. Excellent, thank you. Um, we'll take one last question from the question and answers, and then if there's any burning questions from the audience who, you know, you 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 can just raise your hand um, and then we'll unmute and call on you. Um, so this this question uh, from eBay Johnson is pertains to the integration of localized content and sustainable business models. I mean, I think I think what you heard about here was essentially, um, a very well laid out um, uh, business model that is essentially sustaining itself. Um, the, I don't. I'm not quite sure about the, you know what what you mean exactly by localized content, but um, I don't know. Thompson, Samson, um, even Patrick, uh, do you want to take a stab at this question and and add some nuance to it? Not to the question, but you know, to the response. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me just. Um... Uh, let me let me try to give a response to this. Yeah. So when it talks about um, um, localized content, um, part of what we have tried to do as the association um, is to, as much as possible, look at what are the dominant local languages in the respective location, and then start thinking towards having uh, the different uh, uh, materials available in those 
languages so that the farmers in the respective location can actually assess those materials in their own local language. So yes, this is something that is uh, is, is 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 happening. Um, I remember that also during the Nairobi meeting, we actually uh, continued uh, some translation for some of the paper-based materials and the, uh, the farmers' guides to be able to put them in um, local languages that the farmers can be able to read and understand. Yeah, so if we have uh, demands like this from the different partner organizations, and we actually see a substantial number, uh, we can we are open to doing translations um, in these local languages for the farmer. Then in terms of the business model, basically the idea is, is, is to have a system um, that is uh, self-sustaining, especially now that project funding is, uh, is no longer uh, going to be available. At, um, at the initial stage, we must really commend the efforts of the partners, especially in Nigeria. Um, we, we have had so much in terms of sacrifice and contribution to show the zeal of some of the partners. We actually had um, a, a partner organization donate office space to us um, in their location, uh, where they have just told us, just come and put in furniture and be able to use it as a contact address location for the Akilimo Nigeria Association, which is very commendable. We have also had um, a situation where all of the ESCO members that we have in Nigeria today are actually from the respective partner organizations who are not collecting um, a, any, any payment um, for their activities in the association as of today. I mean, all of what they are doing is, is as part of uh, their own contribution to the growth of the association. So yes, what we are looking at is a sustainable model that will not require so much in terms of uh, funding. We might still have areas like uh, uh, Thompson mentioned, uh, like Patrick mentioned, where we will require support in terms of the tech team and setting up of the other infrastructure. But basically, we, are ha we have a system that at least is taking the first steps and would only require some bit of support for it to be able to move and, uh, and get running. Also, we are encouraging a system where the um, different partners and organizations integrate Akilimo into their respective operations. This makes it easier for them to actually run um, training um, and um, dissemination activities without funding from partners. I mean, without project funding to, to say, go and do this or take this fund. So we have, if, if we have a system where this is integrated into their operations at various stages, then they, they begin to see it as part of what they must do to sustain their own profitability as an organization independently, uh, without having to wait for project funding or support from um, any other partners. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Samson. Um, we have a question. We have a raised hand from William. William, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, okay. Um, mine is not a question per se. Um, good afternoon to Mida, Samson, um, Thompson, uh, Peter, and all of stakeholders. Yeah, mine is not a question per se, but uh, just a few comments to what Samson said that we ought to integrate this uh, model, this Aklimo, into our already or existing um, uh, projects that would ensure sustainability. Um, in fact, um, the, during the pilot process, um, in Ghana, um, some mo most stakeholders have been trained, a trainer of trainers have been conducted um, early part of the year. And after that, what we did was that out of the nine leading producing um, regions in the country, we have 16 regions, and out of that, nine of them are the leading producing countries, uh, sorry, regions. And um, Ghana Cassava Center of us, and we have done about pilot of eight regions on our own. Um, currently, we have two projects that are currently running, the Cassava Productivity Project and Cassava Amplified uh, Project. Uh, that is a seed systems project. And we're trying to integrate the Aklimo, but our focus has been on women, where a cluster that is dominated by women and so that is how we're developing um, um, gender sensitive approaches to make sure that we deliver this um, um, Aklimo concept. And I think it has been it has been a very good um, strategy. Just last week, exactly a week ago, we were in the Savannah region that is uh, in the northern part of Ghana. We met about 74 women where we were trying to um, preach the Aklimo to, to them and the difference that is making in terms of productivity and it's like, they were, they were, they were like, wow, this is magic. 
So so that one, what Samson is saying, I think I support that. I fully support that. Um, the rest is um how um this um the uh, excellence in agronomy and the circle and all that. What what um data collection instrument we're going to put in place to be able to make um the the approaches more efficient. I mean, the current operation is more efficient in data, data collection and also getting uh, um, uh, more user-friendly content that will help us to be able to implement this project successfully. So, I mean, that is uh, my few commentary on this. Thank you. Thank you, William. Um, we are reaching the end of our time, but I don't know, uh, Thompson, did you want to weigh in on anything that William said here? Yeah, not, 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 uh, I think not, not, not really the, the only thing is to also use the opportunity to, to thank some of the partners who have joined because I've seen a lot of them for the cooperation we have received from them uh, maybe for some years now and that uh, maybe such cooperation should also be extended to the association because this is the time to go in the sustainable pathway and the association will require such support just like Samson mentioned that some partners are donating office premises I think uh, more can be done to see how this can really move. Uh, for us, we are out of the box in the, in terms of uh, still supporting the process, but we are not concretely uh, maybe an actor in the value chain. We are just a supporter. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, and with that, I, I want to extend my hearty thanks and deep, deep appreciation to all of you um, the participants, uh, who, who first of all, the, the panelists, uh, but especially to Peter, because Peter is, many of you might know, this is his last day uh, with CGIR, and he's off to new adventures, um, and exciting adventures, I hope. Uh, but, but Peter, uh, you know, we're going to miss you, and I just want to acknowledge that, that you were, um, I know this is a team effort, but I know that you also were um, behind a lot of the, the technical work that went into this. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that and, and to say how huge, how tremendous um, your, your uh, work has been and, and how much it's helped uh, uh, the Excellence in Agronomy Initiative and, and in the work we're trying to take on with AgWise. So absolute thank you for that. Um, thank you to, to you all and to the attendees. Um, I believe we will be able to share the, this, this uh, recording as well as the, the, the slide deck. Barbara, can, can you confirm that that's the case? Confirmed. Okay, excellent. Um, so that will be shared with all of the participants. But again, um, thank you very, very much. Um, and Peter, I hope to see you soon, one way or the other. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Take everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Peter. Thanks, Samson. Thanks, Thompson. Patrick. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye.